Um, we played together a long time, Leighton. I think people seen watching the, the, the video there, you had an array of haircuts during your time. <laughs> Which was your favourite? I think the one where it had the big wing backs, the big floppy pieces hanging down. <laughs> that was me. Um, not on there, is it? No. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Um, Rebelling against everything, I think. Yeah, I remember you're rebelling. Not only against that, you're rebelled against the world at the time, I think. Uh, now, all serious now. How's uh, You've been out a while. How's the injury going? It's going well at the moment now. I'm back outside just doing the tail ends of me fitness stuff. And I've probably got a, a tough week this week coming up. I had a tough day today. And hopefully I'll come through that and drop back into training in the next week, 10 days. Is that a few... Uh... Sharpie, Bainsey's had a few hairstyles over the years, but I don't think he could carry a perm off quite as well as you did. Who'd, who'd a perm? I had a demi weave. It wasn't a perm. I think they've died out now, haven't they? Ozzy, did you have one of them? I had a mini, mini afro at one point, <laughs> but I, I didn't really pull it off, I've got to be honest. It became a bit floppy at the back, so... You must have some special Goodison Park memory, Sharpie. Is, uh, is Bayern Munich the one? Yeah, I think so. Uh, as you said, there's been an awful lot of memories there. Uh, good memories as well, winning the league against QPR. But I think everybody remembers the Bayern Munich game. I think that was the best atmosphere that's been there for, honestly, since I've been at Everton Football Club. I think Fiorentina in the European competition recently has been, has been there. But the Bayern Munich game was incredible. I think the crowd was estimated at 52,000. There must have been 60,000 there and 59,500 were Evertonians. The noise, incredible. Uh, down 1-0 at half time, could have heard a pin drop, but that was when Howard and his famous saying, uh, keep it simple, do what you're doing, and the Gladys Street will suck one in. And that's what happened. You know, we went on to win the game uh, quite comfortably at the end, but, you know, the Gladys Street that night were incredible. Incredible. Back to you later. Uh, talking similar, what was your favourite Goodison Park memory? You've stitched me right up there, haven't you? <laughs> Going off the back of Sharpie. I kind of knew <laughs> I was doing it as well. <laughs> well. Funnily enough, one of the first things that come to mind, probably because you're here, was, like I say, the European nights were always pretty amazing. And I just recalled that goal that you scored. I don't know if they've showed that one. I'm not showing it's that. Snods and diamonds still here. This and this. Yeah, <laughs> the one that, against Larissa. Yeah. That was like, you know, uh, something that just popped into my mind then. It was a good bit of play that I was involved in myself, Stephen, and then finished off. But, like, you know, the European nights were always amazing. Um, special games to play in, and so hopefully there'll be more of them in the, in the near future. We've seen that Bayern Munich game a few times at uh, various dinners that we've been to, Sharpie. If the Bayern Munich game was played tomorrow, it would end up something like four aside, wouldn't it? Why? <laughs> You were animals. Yeah, well, listen, in, the, in those days, and it wasn't just us, we, we gave as good as we got. You know, they, they had some f fabulous players in there. Lothar Mateus played, Son Lerby, Big Augen, Tal the centre back. They could look after themselves as well. You know, so it was a case that first and foremost, you had to win the battle. We won that. And then we were fortunate enough, we scored the goals at the right time. But People talk about the game being fast now, and it is, it's incredibly fast, Fast, sorry. But if you see that game, if you get a chance to watch it again, it was unbelievable, really unbelievable. Reedy went around kicking people all day long. Uh, but it was a fantastic game to play in. You know, really, really an, most enjoyable game to play in. I also played in the, the Liverpool 4-4 draw at Goodison, which was fabulous. But the Bayern Munich one just tops it. It was, it was ex extraordinary. Is that one of those games where the noise is so intense you can scarcely hear your teammates shouting, but there must be a part of you that's saying, we can't lose this, we daren't lose this in front of these people? Well, we went 1-0 down, Dan, and as I said, you know, I think everybody was shocked by it. Uh, but, yeah, we were. I think Howard was brilliant. Howard Kendall was fabulous, and they said he, he could have, you know, lost it at half-time, but he didn't. He just said, listen, boys, I can't fault you for anything you're doing. Just continue to play the way you are. You're kicking towards the Gladys Street. It'll be good for you. It'll turn. The game will turn. We scored two goals off long throws, throw-ins. Gary Stevens and uh, 
one for me, one for Andy Gray, then Trevor topped it off. But listen, once, once we get back in level terms, there's always going to be one winner. Uh, and there's numerous stories come out of it. I don't know if you've heard Reedy and he's after dinner. He tells a fabulous story. Uh, but it was a memorable night, one that everybody will remember. And the final was even better. The final was better, Ozzy. The final was was easier, and that was uh, without being blasé, but I think the semi-final was, was the final itself. Uh, Bayern Munich were the best team. Uh, Rapid Vienna had played Celtic in the other semi-final. We went to see them, and we, we thought we'd beat the two of them. So we, we knew if we beat Bayern Munich, we'd win the cup, and that's what happened. Bainsey, you've taken many last gasp penalties at Goodison Park, down at the Gladys Street end. Can you see the punters... Might sound like a daft question. Can you actually, are they in your eye line or are you just focusing on the ball, the goal and the keeper? Uh, I try to keep me focused as much on what I've decided I'm going to do. Um, every now and again you will, I think, make eye contact with someone or you'll hear a shout. I think the most recent one was Watford. Um, that was late on and I think it was a, a, an important game at the time. We needed a win and what popped into my mind at the time was my kids watching and like, I stood over the ball and I was thinking, oh, they're going to get leathered in school if I miss this. <laughs> and I've never, I've never really allowed myself to, like, come out of, you know, my mind like that and what I'm, what I'm focused on. And I started to quickly put it to the back of my mind and, and get on with the job. But um, generally, yeah, I'm, I'm quite focused. So can you, during the game, do you, because you play left back out wide, do you hear the fans during the game? Uh, you know, there's a lot of... People sometimes say, especially if things aren't going well and, you know, there's a few moans and groans and I often don't hear that or if I do, I don't pay any attention to it or too much attention. <laughs> it's easier than me, I heard every single one. <laughs> no, but, but like, I do tend to hear like more like individual shouts as opposed to like being aware of the sort of the global atmosphere at times, unless it's like, I think you're aware of it and it's it more probably if it's, if it's positive, you go with it. And if it's negative, you sort of try to just block it out. And yeah, it's more the, more the individual shouts. And there's a few witty people in there who can be quite cut on as well. Uh, you've, you've, uh, I think you've, you've, you've done now 10 years at the club already this season. It's a fantastic achievement. Do you see yourself doing many more? I don't know. What's, what's, it's, the, what's the aim? I sort of haven't set any targets. Or you just have to see you know, how long your legs will still carry it. And also, you know, those decisions are not yours to make. You know, you, the hope is you can carry on forever, but everyone knows it's not possible. And, you know, your body will naturally decline. And um, I think whoever's in charge of the club, the manager and the other people will eventually make that call. I think the, the onus is on the individual, so myself, to live my life right, be as fit as I possibly can. So I can look myself in the mirror when that time comes, when they say, you know, you're not for us anymore that I've, I've given everything I've got. How do you feel now, Bainsey? Right now, I'm knackered after today, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sharba, you and I have done many commentaries at Goodison Park and you do tend to hear the odd... <laughs> the odd murmur of discontent, shall we say, from the supporters. Listen, we're all here tonight and, and everybody knows what a wonderful place it is to play with, especially when you're doing well. But I'd have to say that it's one of the most difficult places to play when things aren't going well and, and you can hear the crowd and the stick you're getting. You know, the lads are talking about it before, but I remember playing, I think it was against Coventry in a League Cup tie and Howard was struggling and there was six, 7,000 at Goodison and not only could you hear the boos and the, the, the disapproval, but you could actually spot the guy who was doing it to you <laughs> in the test and you knew it was coming from him and knew it was coming from him. And let me tell you, so whilst it's brilliant to play at Goodison, when it's like that and times are tough, it's really, really difficult. Uh, quick question to both of you, separate as well, in, in terms of talking Goodison. What would you say was your, your standout or your favourite goal each that you scored at Goodison Park? Go on, Beansy. You can't think. Uh, <laughs> Be a penalty. Again, one, one that sticks out for me was Tottenham. Uh, I'd just broken into the side, not long broken into the side. I think we're around a bit... 82, 83, and I hit a volley at the park end. Uh, Ray Clements was in goal for Tottenham. Uh, Ardilis, Hoddle, they had a really good side at the time. We'd, I think we drew the game 1 1, but I hit a volley Aussie from outside the box at the park end. So that would have to be the one at Goodison. 
Past Ray Clemens as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was past uh, Clemens goal. Uh, but again, I was just breaking into the side at the time, so it was important for me to score goals. Uh, and I managed to get one in that, in that day. It was spectacular. One goal of the season. Uh, I went to the TV studios expecting a beautiful little bit of crystal or silver salver. A fucking tea towel. <laughs> <laughs> A fucking tea towel with kick off on it. Yeah. <laughs> Needless to say, I haven't got it anymore. Follow that. What's your best goal? Uh, at Goodison, the one that springs to mind at the moment, um, I don't know if it was West Brom or Newcastle, I think a bit of combination with, with Stephen, I think, as, as normal, and then I think broke into the box and, and finished it. But we were just saying there, I've, all my free kicks have been away from home and all... The, just said, strikes. what about one of your free kicks? He said they were all away from home. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about the Newcastle one, which the Newcastle one uh, up there, and it, it would still be travelling if there hadn't been a net there. Yeah, and I was reluctant to hit that really, just um, no one else wanted to get on it at the time, and I thought it was more of a crossing position for the right footer, but I just couldn't sell it to anyone. So I think just being a bit frustrated, I ended up thinking, right, well, I'm just going to whack it then. And that was literally all it was. It, and for that reason, it wasn't always my favourite because it was literally just an old school. I'm just going to put my foot through it. And it, you know, you, every now and again you catch one like that and it just flew. My, my favourites were uh, the two you scored down at West Ham away, especially the one that went off the right post. I mean, the one that went off the other post, you, did, oh, you, you picked your post either goal. Well, but uh, the one that went off, the, the, the one you curled inwards, I thought was yeah, well, just I'd, unreal. I'd prefer those because there was thought behind it and a little bit more skill. Like, remember Roundy? So, Moisey's assistant manager used to tell me sometimes about the goalkeepers, and I think we might have played Bolton. And before the game, he told me Jaskalainen cheats and takes a step. Now, Jaskalainen had gone to West Ham, so I remembered that. And then the first one is why. I went goalkeeper's side and he did take that cheating step and then through doing the first one, it meant he had to stay honest for the second one. He couldn't afford to, for that to happen again. And probably if it didn't, it ends up in the post. But even if it was a yard or two inside, he probably wouldn't have got to it just because he had to wait that second longer. Did you ask Snod these questions? What were his best goals? <laughs> hey. <laughs> we could have said to Snod's talk us through all your goals. <laughs> We've had, um, we've had a couple of young players on here tonight who I thought did really, really well. You, you've completed the journey, Sharpie, from a very young man in the first team all the way through to being a senior player. Who were the guys who helped you when you first, when you first came into the team? Because every young player needs a little, a little bit of guidance. Yeah, they did. When I, when I first came down, I was in the, the dressing room at Belfield and looking across at Bob Latchford, Asa Hartford, George Wood, John Gidman. Uh, Peter Easto, who, who I played up. So they were all a massive help for me. Uh, you know, especially being away from home, uh, it was difficult for me. But, you know, Gary Stanley, Gary Megson had been bought at the same time. Uh, so it was, it was tough for me. But, listen, we all know that you need a little bit of luck along the way as well. You need hard work and desire, uh, which, which the lads are shown. But you need a little bit of luck as well. Uh, I, was, I was fortunate enough. I got that luck. Uh, and enjoyed my time here, but uh, Ozzy and Baines will have their, their own memories of, of growing up and coming through the system as well. But for me, uh, I was 19 when I, when I moved down. Uh, so it may be a little bit easier in terms of age, but uh, I think those players I mentioned were, were really instrumental. And, and also the coach, Colin Harvey, who I wouldn't have achieved what I achieved if it wasn't for Colin. He was a fantastic coach. I think you worked under him, Ozzy. Uh, so Colin deserves a lot of credit as well.